Good morning. Welcome to day eight of the Spring into Simple Decluttering Challenge. Um, as usual, just give me a quick second. I'm just gonna make sure. Yep, looks like we're going. Um, so welcome, welcome back. We are over the hump. We're more than halfway through the challenge. So it's all gonna get easier from here. So today we're actually working on one of my favorite um, things to do in the kitchen to really make a big impact on the way your kitchen looks, the way it feels, and the way it functions. So today we are talking about surface clutter in the kitchen. Um, flat surfaces, we've talked about this, I think it was day two when we worked on a flat surface. Um, flat surfaces can become magnets for clutter. And this is especially true in the kitchen just because there are just the nature of the kitchen, there are so many flat surfaces that they can really attract a lot of clutter. So, you know, you have your countertops, you might have an island, you have a table, all of these flat surfaces just really can call clutter to them and clutter can just end up staying there, building up and making life a little stressful. So, and we also know that clutter seems to attract more clutter. So maybe it starts with just one or two things sitting on your counter, but then it's almost like that's an invitation for more things to end up there. And it just seems to attract more and more till suddenly there's like quite a bit of stuff on the counter or your table or wherever you're dealing with. And it can feel overwhelming, it can feel stressful, it can make your kitchen look messy and chaotic and just all of these things. So today we'll focus on surface clutter. And I also wanna say that clearing the surface clutter really makes life easier in the kitchen. It makes cooking easier. You have more space to cook without having to work around a bunch of stuff. It makes cleaning up easier. Um, if you think about how easy it is to wipe your counters down when there's nothing on them versus when they're covered in stuff, it's quite clear that it's a lot easier to clean up when there's less clutter on your flat surfaces. And then it can just make your kitchen feel tidier and more peaceful and calmer when there's less stuff out as well. So. This is why this today's task can really have a big impact on the way your kitchen feels. So we'll be focusing on three surfaces in the kitchen today. We're going to focus on the kitchen counters, your kitchen or dining room table, and the front of your fridge. So remember, do what you can with the time you have. If you have a lot of stuff on your flat surfaces, you might just want to tackle one of those surfaces or just a section of one of those surfaces. If it's not so bad, you might be able to get through all three. So just do what you can with the time you have. Um, we really want to focus on making progress, not trying to achieve perfection. So some progress clearing some clutter is better than no progress clearing no clutter at all. So just do what you can today with the time you have. Um, I'll talk about all three surfaces and do as much as you can in the time that you have for decluttering today. So I'll start talking about the kitchen counters and the table. So as I said, it depends on where you're at. If, you, if your counters have a lot of stuff on them, you might just wanna tackle one specific section of your counters, or if you can, maybe tackle all the counters. So just do what you can, do as much as you can, and it all matters. So I like to start by gathering everything from the counters and the table that doesn't belong. Um, so sort through that pile, throw out the garbage, put things away where they do belong, get rid of stuff that you don't need, deal with stuff if it needs to be dealt with, file it if it's paperwork, that kind of thing. Um, and then as you're doing that, notice what kind of stuff tends to pile up on these surfaces. Is it paperwork? Is it, you know, dishes? Is it who knows what else? Is it just stuff people come in and drop their keys and bags and purses and wallets and phones and that kind of thing? Notice what is building up on these surfaces and then see if you can do some brainstorming or problem solving to come up with a different way to deal with that stuff. Like we said on day two, maybe it's a hanging file for paperwork. Maybe it's a little basket for your husband to drop all of his stuff when he comes in the door so it at least stays contained to that basket rather than all over the counter. Whatever it is, just see if you can do a little problem solving to figure out how you can keep that clutter from piling up and getting out of control again next time. So once you've dealt with what doesn't belong, next is time to look at what is usually out on that flat surface you're dealing with. So, you know, this could be things like on your kitchen counter, it could be small appliances, um, a utensil caddy, a knife block, canisters, 
maybe little decor items. Just look at what you usually keep out on your counters. And then I encourage you to challenge yourself if you really need it all on your counters. Just think about, do I really need it all out? Could some of it be stored in a cabinet or stored in the pantry or stored somewhere else? Do I need all the decor items? Um, and just because again, the more stuff you keep on your surfaces, the more visual clutter it adds to your space, but it's also, again, that invitation to attract more stuff to pile up next to those items that you usually keep up. So clutter attracts more clutter. So um, just really experiment, be open to trying. Could you have some of that stuff not on your counter, not on your table, and just see what it's like. Experiment, try it. Just maybe try it for a few days and see what it's like. See what, it's, what it does for you in the kitchen. Um, you know, it changes the look and the feel of your kitchen. Your kitchen will look tidier, more open, more spacious, cleaner, but it also changes the function of your kitchen. Again, the less stuff you have on the counters, the more space you have for cooking and also the easier cleaning up is. Um, I know I personally like to keep my counters almost completely clear and it's so nice when I'm doing the dishes to be able to wipe the counters down in no time at all. I don't have to move anything. I don't have to lift things up and wipe under them. I don't have to move things side to side. I just wipe the counters and they're clean. So I encourage you to really challenge yourself. Does everything need to stay on there or could you put some of it away and just have less on your counters in general? And then the same with your kitchen table. Go through the same process as we just talked about. And then when you get to the end, if you like to keep, you know, like a centerpiece or something on your table, I really encourage you to just see if that's working for you or not. I know personally in some seasons, I enjoy having something on the center of my table. It's pretty, it adds a little life to the kitchen and I like it. In other seasons, it feels like extra work and just annoys me. So I just feel like it's not necessary in those seasons. That's just something I can do to simplify my life. So I encourage you not to lock yourself into one way or the other. Like you either have a centerpiece or you absolutely don't but just really see how it feels. Is that adding value to your life? Does it bring you joy? Do you enjoy seeing that? Does it make you happy when you walk in the kitchen? Or is it, does it just feel like extra work? That it's just something else you have to move around the kitchen and wipe and clean and keep all the other stuff from piling up within that centerpiece or whatever it is. So I encourage you again to just experiment. Um, and again, don't lock yourself into one way or the other, but just really see how it feels for you right now and if it's working for you or not. So I have learned over the years um, sharing my clear counters. Like I said, I keep them almost completely clear. Um, and I have learned over the years sharing them on Instagram and on Facebook that clear counters are quite controversial. People have strong feelings about um, my kitchen counters being so clear. So. I just encourage you to keep an open mind to it. Don't, you know, I have gotten everything from, oh, the kitchen looks great to your kitchen looks cold and sterile like nobody lives there. So I just encourage you to keep an open mind, um, experiment having less on your counters and just see how you like it. You'll never know until you actually try and live with it for a little while. So I really encourage you to kind of set aside your preconceived ideas and just try it. Try living with less and see how you like it. And then I also want to say the goal is not to have clear counters all day every day. My goal personally is to start each day with clear counters and then life just fills them up. It gives us room for, you know, like I said, cooking. It gives us room for crafts and to gather and to eat and to do homework and to do all the things that we want to do in the kitchen. It just gives us that space to do it without already starting with cluttered, distracting surfaces. So my kitchen counters don't stay clear all day. Life sprinkles fill them up, um, you know, and we use them and we make messes and we do all of these things. But knowing that I start each day with clear counters just kind of gives me that sense of peace and calm and allows space for all of that life to happen. And then not only that, but at the end of the day, I'm also not wasting mental energy you know, assessing what's supposed to stay on the counters and what needs to be put away. I just know that everything out on the counters needs to be put away um, to take me back to that blank slate. 
so I don't have to decide, oh, does that stay? Does this stay? You know, and some of this stuff you don't even realize you're making these decisions, but you are. You're making a decision that stays, that has to be put away, that stays. So all of that stuff takes mental energy. So I appreciate that I don't have to use any mental energy. I know that everything on the counters gets put away at the end of the day. So that's just my experience. But like I said, I know that people have quite strong feelings. So I just encourage you to keep an open mind and just be open to trying having less and see how it works and feels for you. So the next surface that I wanted to talk about today was the front of your fridge. Um, so when you have a lot of stuff on the front of your fridge, it can add a lot of visual clutter to your kitchen. Um, it can make your kitchen look messier, busier. And the thing about the stuff on the front of our fridge is we can easily become clutter blind to it. We just stop noticing it altogether. And it's not until you clear off all of that stuff that you notice how much different your kitchen looks and feels without it. And I actually read one study that said the amount of stuff a family keeps on the front of their fridge is often correlated with their tolerance for clutter in other areas of their house. So if they have a lot of stuff on their fridge, they were more tolerant of clutter in other spaces. But if they had less on their fridge, they seem to be less tolerant of clutter in other areas of their home. So I thought that was really interesting. I don't know exactly what that you know what the science behind that is but i thought it was just an interesting correlation that this is clutter you kind of become clutter blind to but it almost just increases your tolerance for clutter in general so that's something interesting to keep in mind so for the fridge i like to start by clearing it off completely take everything off the front of your fridge um sort through it all and get rid of what you don't need anymore, what's outdated, what you just don't want anymore. Look at what's left and really ask yourself, does it need to be on the front of your fridge? Is that the only place it could live or would there be another place that it could live that would be just as effective? And again, just for a fun experiment, I encourage you to keep the front of your fridge clear for like a few days, maybe a week and just see how your kitchen feels without all that stuff on the front of your fridge. Just think of it as an experiment, try it and see how it feels for you. And then as you're deciding, so once you've sorted through and got rid of everything that doesn't belong, if you wanna put some stuff back on your fridge, I encourage you to do it very selectively. Um, you know, just be very careful that you're only putting the most important things up that absolutely have to be there rather than just putting it all back by default. And another thing that can be a good solution is if you want to keep the front of your fridge clear, but you still have, you know, maybe calendars or reminders or whatever it is that you need to see on a regular basis, maybe try putting them somewhere else. It could be the side of your fridge. Um, I know I often keep our meal plan inside on the door of inside of our pantry door. So it's just, it's less visual. It's still there. It's still handy. I can easily see it but it's just not front and center on the fridge. So don't, don't be afraid to experiment and try different things that way too. So that's today's task. So the counters, the table, the front of your fridge. Again, do what you can in the time you have. If you can't get to all of those spaces, that's okay. It all matters. Every little bit of clutter you remove matters. So just do what you can in the time you have. But I encourage you to be open to experimenting today. Just be open to trying something different and see how it feels for you. And if you are gonna do some experimenting like this, I'd love to hear and see about it. So share it in the group. Show us what you're considering working on. Show us you know, your before and afters that you're trying out to see if you like, and just see how it goes. So that's today's task. Keep sharing in the group. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. We're gonna do one more day in the kitchen. We're gonna do kind of a fun, task. Well, I think it's fun. Maybe I'm crazy, but I think it's a fun decluttering task because we will all be working on something different. So that will be tomorrow, one more day in the kitchen. Um, and for today, let's focus on the surface clutter in our kitchens and see where we get. So thank you for joining me. And yeah, I look forward to seeing what you're working on. So take care, everybody. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, um, again, just post them in the group. And yeah, some of this stuff, like I said, clear counters can be quite controversial and people seem to have lots of questions about it whenever I share um, my clear counters on Instagram or anything. So if you do have any questions about how it works or how I do it, 
feel free to post them in the group. And yeah, I will answer them to the best of my ability. So take care, everybody. Happy decluttering. I'm super excited to see what you work on today. So have fun with it. Keep an open mind. Be open to experimenting. And here we go. Day eight. So take care, everybody. We'll talk to you again tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. I'll be back for another Facebook Live tomorrow. All right. Take care. Bye for now.